What is going on guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about how do you get a gecko that is 66% het for a certain trait. My name is Frank, this little one is Shelby, and he is a super giant tremper albino leopard gecko. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. Okay guys, here we have our Punnett square board and this is gonna teach us exactly how we calculate 66%. And I had to fix this really quick because I had written up here albino, a visual albino, but you can't actually get 66% from a visual to anything. It has to be a het to a het. So notice those keywords here, het and het. So just remember to get 66%, it has to be a het to het pairing. And here's why. A het to het is gonna be expressed in the Punnett square as capital A, which means the capital A is not carrying the recessive gene for albino and the lowercase a is carrying the recessive gene for albino. So the dad only has one copy of the albino gene. Mom is also het for albino. So she too is carrying only one copy of the albino gene. Now real quick, can you guess which letter is the albino gene? If you said lowercase a, you are correct. So dad has one copy of the albino gene and that's expressed in lowercase a. The uppercase a is the partner gene at that genetic location where the mutation takes place, but the dad did not inherit two copies of the albino gene, therefore he is only a het albino. And the mom is the same. So if you'll indulge me for a second, this is a chromosome. Chromosomes are where each mutation takes place in a leopard gecko. So they have many different chromosomes in their body. Each chromosome contains different genes and different genetics. Let's just say at this genetic location, this is where albino takes place and it will always have two copies, one from the dad and one from the mom that the baby inherited. And let's say, just so you understand this, this location is white and yellow because that's easy to write, W-Y. So at this location, this is where the genetics are twisted to create a white and yellow gecko. And at this location, this is where the genetics are twisted to create an albino leopard gecko. But to create an albino leopard gecko, since it's a recessive gene, you need a lowercase a and a lowercase a. But dad and mom do not have two lowercase a's. One of them is uppercase. This is a non-albino gene. This is an albino gene. But you need two of these to create an actual albino animal. And here's how that's gonna break down in our example here. So this is a pretty easy Punnett square. If you've never done them before, you basically put the dad's two genetics over the top. See, capital A, lowercase a, that's what he has at that genetic location. And you take mom's genetics and put them on the side. And that's what she has as well. In her corresponding chromosome, she has capital A, lowercase a as well. And you drop this down and carry this over. And here, you're gonna have capital A, capital A. So this is a non-albino leopard gecko. It's not even carrying an albino gene from dad or mom. This little a drops down and this big a carries over. And this gecko is actually a het for albino. See, it's carrying one copy of the albino gene. The same thing happens here. This big A drops down, this little A carries over, and something different happens over here. This A carries down, this A carries over, and here you actually have what would be a visual albino. And this one is het, see that? And this one is non. So whenever you're talking about genetics and calculations, we usually calculate genetics out of 100%. And so it's usually calculated from a Punnett square, which this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. If all four boxes were albino, you'd have 100% albinos, but they're not. We have one box, which is a non-albino. We have two boxes, which are het albinos. And we have one box, which is a actual visual albino. And that, if you add them up, one plus two plus one, 
That's four boxes, and that equals 100% of your genetic possibilities for this animal. So think of every genetic out of four. That's the key that we're looking for. So if you have one non-albino out of four possibilities, this is a 25% percent chance to get a completely non-albino, no carrying any albino genes gecko. Here, you actually have two chances to hit either one of these, which you would think would be 50% because if you have two chances out of four, that equals 50%. So let's just leave it that way for now. Then we're going to come back. And this one as well, you have one chance to hit lowercase a, lowercase a out of four opportunities and that's going to be 25% again. So you have a 25% chance to hit a gecko that is not carrying any albino gene. You have a 25% chance to actually hit a visual albino, and you have a 50% chance to hit a het albino animal. Except in the hobby, what we do, and I don't know why we do this, because to me, it actually doesn't make that much sense. When you pop out a visual albino, you take that box out of the equation and you only calculate these boxes out of three. So once you hit an actual albino out of your clutches, every other non-visual albino that pops up, because remember, this is a non-visual. All three of these are non-visual albinos. And that's what makes this so difficult. You don't know which one this is. You don't know which one this is. You don't know which one this is. So let's say you have three little geckos. Here's my image of a little gecko. There's his little tail, little gecko. There's his little tail, little gecko. There's his little tail. You have three little geckos and you're looking at them and none of them are albino. Well, which one is the double non-albino? Which one is het and which one is the other het? Because we've already produced the visual, we take that out of the equation and we look at these three animals and we say, okay, now the odds are only out of three. One, two, three. Only these three boxes we are going to consider now because we've already produced the visual. To me, that doesn't make much sense. I, I still think there's a 50% chance to hit albino. That's just the way that I visualize it, but it sounds better in the hobby when we say 66%. And now here's why. You have one, two, three boxes. To hit this box, you have a one out of three chance, which is what? 33%. It's actually 33.3333 carried on percent. But you have this box, which is 33%, and you have this box, which is 33%. And so when it's 33.3 infinite for all three of those boxes, that adds up to 100%. In this case, three out of three equals 100%. And even though 33% plus 33% plus 33% is 99%, it's the 0 0.33333 repeating infinitely that gives you the 100%. So people just kind of round it down to 33. So one out of the three is 33%. So what is two out of the three? Two out of the three is 33% plus another 33% and you get 66%. And why did we just add add 33 and 33 together because technically out of these three, one, two, three, two of them are supposed to be statistically het for albino, even though you can't tell because you need two copies of albino to see the animal. Two of these animals are carrying a single copy of albino. And the way that you calculate that now is by taking this animal and this animal out of 100% out of these three boxes, you have two divided by three, which is 66%. Two divided by three, is going to be 66%. So basically the way that you would market this is that any of these geckos, this little gecko, this little gecko, or this little gecko, they all have a 66% chance to be carrying the albino gene that you're looking for. Now, does that mean they are? No, obviously one of them still isn't and two of them are and you won't know which one it is until you do something called proving it out. And so what you need to do is you need to take any one of these three geckos, any one of those three geckos there, and you need to breed it to a visual albino or a het albino, and you need to look for albino babies. If albino babies come out, then you know that the gecko that you had fell into one of these two boxes instead of this box 
which does not carry any albino gene. All right, guys, well, what did you think? This gecko is a black night leopard gecko. It does not follow the same principles that we just discussed for albinism. So you can't use the Punnett square in the same way to calculate genetic odds for this one. For that, it's a whole different set of guidelines that I will link in the top right corner here because we've already done a full genetic series on everything genetic related to leopard geckos. If any part of this video confused you about recessive genes, dominant genes, we go over 66%. We go over all of that in a different series that we've made before in the past. We have six videos on genetics and I'll leave a link to that playlist in the top right corner here So please check any or all of those videos out and it really will increase your genetic awareness for entering into the leopard gecko hobby So thank you guys once again I look forward to seeing you in the next video and remember until then have a geeky gecko great day peace